Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Another magnificent spring morning, morning here in Sydney town. A little bit colder than normal. Paula was telling me last night that it's uh, due to uh, due to snow today and uh, I can feel that chill in the air we haven't had sunrise yet but it's uh, not too far away I'm starting work a little bit later this morning so I do have an opportunity to deliver another book summary to add to the 1440 so that I've done already and we've got a cruise ship heading back to dock up here in Sydney Harbour on this morning so it will provide us with a lovely backdrop so that I can uh, highlight and showcase the magnificent beauty of this city around us and at the same time overlay it with a message of empowerment uh, through another book summary and today's book summary just bear with me and I'll just turn my notes is a classic and it comes from one of my most favourite authors. The author is Jim Rowan and I remember years ago coming to see Jim Rowan here in Sydney at one of his seminars and I remember how enchanted I was with his style, with his voice and with his message, his timeless message of uh, personal development and peak performance. And today's book is entitled The Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness. So what I'll do is I'll perch myself up here. There's some people taking some photographs creating memories just like I did many years ago with my beautiful wife Paula where I remember bringing her down here and having my Nikon SLR camera my very expensive Nikon SLR camera and capturing a beautiful moment with Paula suspended on that uh, just over there actually under the bridge suspended holding on to the banisters just like the people over here have been taking photos and are just checking out their photos now so let's uh, go on a walk and talk and see where this book summary leads us so Jim Rowan is one of the greats and he kicks off his book summary and his message with a profound statement where he says that success is a process of consistently applying time-tested and time-proven principles of living a specific lifestyle that offers a higher probability of success and successful outcomes so what we're saying here and what Jim Rowan is saying here is that success is not guaranteed because at the end of the day, we all each have our own fate and God has his own plan for each and every one of us. And just like we have all lived a different, a very different past, we are all are going to live a different now, a different present. I am here, you are there. And we are all going to live undoubtedly a different future as well 
and as we mentioned we all have a different fate now you could have a thousand people lined up along the shoreline here fishing with the fa same fishing rod the same bait the same rig some will catch fish and others won't catch fish some will catch more fish some will catch fewer fish some will catch a big fish others will catch small fish and once again we are all basically dipping our line in the same water at the same time in the same place and yet it's fate it's luck that will bring that fish to our hook but uh, as we've mentioned and as Jim Rowan says each person has their fate but we all are called to work our fate nobody's going to tap us on the shoulder to offer us a promotion nobody's going to tap us on our shoulder to increase our wealth it's something that we each need to work and as we mentioned before we each need to work our gifts our God-given gifts because we are different from each other but we are different also for each other so the author also goes on to say something empowering as well and very powerful that we don't really need to waste our lifetime reinventing the wheel with each generation and go through the same mistakes and end up at the same dead end in life and hating ourselves and hating our lives and blaming our parents and blaming everybody around us as Jim Rowan says we have a lifetime to live and a lifetime is a long time for most people some people make it to a hundred other people make it to three score and ten some only make it to thirty or even less but regardless of what your time allotment is as Jim Rowan says, each of us have a duty and a responsibility to make the most of that lifetime, that time allotment that God has given us to uh, you know, fulfill and to make the most of. How massive, how big is this ship, multi-story, it's called the Ovation of the seas a, a Royal Caribbean ship and it's gracing our shores here in Sydney and bringing thousands of tourists to our, our country and it's, it's about time after two years of COVID shutdowns it's great to see that Sydney is slowly but surely getting back its mojo so the author also goes on to say that if you get a few things right then chances are that you will get most of the things right in our lives because there's only about a half dozen things that deliver 80 percent of the outcomes i.e the Pareto Principle but what is important for each and every one of us is to make sure that we get the important things right and to focus on the majors don't major on minor things but major on the major things which means that we need to identify what is important what we value we need to spend time um, developing plans and dreams and focusing our efforts on doing and achieving those important half dozen things in our lives and those half dozen things are different for each person as we said they're not the same for each person but as Jim Rowan says, there are some principles, there are some standard principles in life that uh, 
you know, if followed, if uh, leveraged, can lead to a better life, can lead to a life of fulfilment and more happiness. But as Jim says and reminds us, that it all stems and starts with discipline. We need a disciplined approach in life and we need to have a focused, disciplined effort. And this consistent effort uh, will compound over time and hopefully reap lots of fruit. But the important thing is that we need this discipline, we need this disciplined effort, but we need to be focused on the things that make the greatest difference in our lives, the relationships that we have around us, you know, to marry well, to have children, to, uh, to work, to have a fulfilling career, to partner with God, to serve God and to serve our neighbours and to use and hone our skills to be able to generate um, outcomes not only for ourselves as we said but for others around us. You know, we all come into the world with some gifts. We are all called to improve and to enhance those gifts through training, through practice and all of those things and only then once you've done all that you'll be in a better position to be able to maximize uh, not only your life as we said before but also the life of others around us because we need to make sure that our full is cu our, our cup is full and overflowing in order to be generous in order to be able to offer time to those around us so to a certain extent as Jim says we need to be at certain times of our lives um, selfish before we become selfless we need to be effective before we become efficient and it all means that we need to put in the hard yards early in life in order to be able to manifest better outcomes for ourselves and others around us. So Jim also says that compounding works in two ways and that success and failure don't happen because of one single isolated event. So we don't fail in life because of one isolated event, unless of course you, you know, use that event to bring down your downfall. What Jim is saying is that um, failure, just like success, happens over time uh, based on a series of events, a series of steps that happen over time um, that you let happen in your life. You know, there are certain things that happen and you know it's our response to those things which determine how our life goes and where our life ends up. So what Jim is saying here is that we need to need to build and accumulate skills and gifts uh, and to try and live our calling to identify the values in our lives what is important to our lives uh, and the things that I will value will be different to the things that you value um, and I guess over time it's probably a good thing for us all to have different values but of course to have similar core values uh, the thing the magic glue that holds and brings families together so what we're saying is we need to 
spend some time thinking, spend some time focusing and ruminating and uh, introspecting into our lives in order to identify the key things, the key elements that make us tick, the things that get us up early in the morning and keep us up late at night and the things that make our lives special. I think I was mentioning before that many years ago I was down here with my wife Paula and I found the exact point where Paula climbed up onto that railing there and I took that iconic iconic photo of my beautiful then girlfriend Paula and she was standing right here and this is the mark here this little arrow so if I look at the photo at home there's the arrow there and Paula is holding the railing with the magnificent iconic opera house in the background and she's looking over at me with a grin and I remember clicking clicking the shutter and capturing that beautiful moment never knowing that one day we would be married never knowing that one day we would have children never knowing that one day that we'd be grandparents and still together after 40 years so it's amazing how each person's life transpires and uh, once again it all depends about the commitment that you have to yourself and to each other and the steps that you take day in day out to keep things um, on the right keel so the art author here Jim Rowan also says that we need to ask before we receive we need to ask of ourselves as we alluded to before in terms of doing some thinking in terms of what is valuable to us what we want to get out of our lives we have to ask of others um, in order to make the sale you need to ask for the business nobody's going to come as we said before and tap you on the shoulder and offer you the business offer you the uh, the things that you want in life and of course we also need to ask of God as well through prayer and through discipline and through patience so as the author said before it's important to focus our efforts on the things that are most important to us to major on majors not to major on minors and not to minor on majors as well but a lot of people get distracted a lot of people lose their way in life and end up worrying end up fighting end up spending a lot of important valuable energy on things that are not all that important and as we say you know good people are found now good people aren't changed so if you're going to try and change anybody you're basically wasting your time in life uh, you're better off focusing your efforts on changing yourself focusing your efforts on finding the right people, the good people in the world, rather than trying to change the ones that you have in the world. Just accept them, just live with them, get, and try and get by with them, but don't, as we said before, try and change them. The other thing that is big for Jim Rowan is learning how to identify and to copy and to mirror success and to understand that even if you're copying even if you're copying success each of us have our own fate um, just because somebody else has achieved something in their lives 
doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to achieve it. You know, it needs to be part of God's plan and it needs, you know, you need to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right things and patiently um, working towards what you're trying to achieve and not to just expect things to happen because you tick the, the various boxes, as we say. Luck has a part to play in everybody's life. Some call it luck, some call it fate, other people's call, people call it God's uh, wish, God's will, God's providence, but uh, it has an impact, as we say, and we've got to accept it and uh, not expect too much if it's not coming our way. Uh, the author here also, I remember years ago, impacted me in a big way, where he said that the most important thing in life is to read, is to gain from other people's experiences, and to go to the well of wisdom which is basically held in texts, in books, in seminars, um, and is available to all, and especially now, more so than ever before. When I was younger, I come from a generation that if you needed to learn something, you know, there were no vlogs, there were no blogs, um, there were very, very few tele television documentaries. You basically needed to go to a book to learn and to find out about something. Uh, when I was young I had an encyclopedia, a uh, world book encyclopedia and you basically when you had a school project you didn't get, go to Dr Google or Mr Google you had to open up the encyclopedia and read and study and research or go to the library and grab books and just go through the books to try and identify the morsels, the gems of information that would answer your question. So uh, OPE, other people's experience, other people's knowledge, is the key. Um, as we've said time and time again, we all can only live one life at a time. Um, we've got one time allotment. We can only be at one place at one time. Um, even though you know, we've got instant messaging and all of these other tools available, uh, we can only be at one place at one time and we can only gather one slice, one sliver of reality at a time through our experiences. But what Jim Rowan is saying is that with the power of OPE, other people's experiences, that is captured in texts, in books, and preserved over time, over generations, what we're saying is that you can take that, you can leverage that, that is available to each and every one of us. And as we said, because of the internet, it is free of charge. Um, there are book summaries, there are books, there are vlogs, there are blogs. There is a myriad of information available online now to each and every person to be able to tap into other people's experiences, OPE, and use that to supplement and complement their lives by taking other people's slithers of reality, of reality other people's perspective other people's reflections just like we can see the sun reflecting off that building over there at North Sydney I can't see the sunrise from here but through that reflection through that other perspective I can see I can catch a glimpse of reality even though if I spin around I can't see the sun or e any evidence of the sun in the east but when I look at the north, I can see that reflection off that building. And similarly, what we're saying is that through books that have been, uh, that have captured wisdom over the generations, 
we can still continue to capture perspective um, and, and truths, time-tested, time-proven truths that have stood the test of time. Jim Rowan is very, very big on self-education. I remember at the seminar where he said that you can go to university and gain yourself a formal education, but a formal education, he said, will only get you a job. You know, it will be your meal ticket to uh, make some money, to put some food on the table, and to live a modest lifestyle. But he said the key for each person to try and pursue is to gain self-education and you've got your whole lifetime to be self-educated and self-education comes from being curious comes from being a life learner comes from just you know wanting to add to your knowledge base I've learnt over time that learning is simply the art of attaching the unknown to the known. And the more you know, the more you're capable of knowing. The more you've learnt, the more you're capable of learning. So as we're saying, it's all about gaining additional perspective and adding the unknown to the known. So what else can we learn here from Jim Rowan? He also is very, very big, as we said, on reading, reading books. Um, not just book summaries, but reading the whole book. Because it's by reading the whole book, you understand the culture of the author. You get the full gambit of the message. And you're able to then picture in your own mind uh, the, the, the message, the, uh, the lesson that the author is trying to pass on. And that in itself is what I'm trying to achieve with Jim's 5am club. Now I've got almost 1,500 vlogs, videos, of which most, if not all, are based on books that I've read, book summaries that I've read, and experiences that I've had in my lifetime. And what I do on a daily basis is I get up early. I love starting my day and doing a vlog and uh, basically passing on the, uh, the knowledge that I've picked up through these book summaries. And what we try and do is we try and identify um, two or three key points two or three key lessons and use those to incorporate into our daily life and use as life hacks to try and improve um, our worldview, what we see, what we do and to make each day a learning experience. As Jim Rowan says, our goal in life, each and every one of us, is to hone our skills and to become better and to know that you can't change the seasons. What we have to do is to fit in with the seasons and make the most of the seasons as they um, appear and as they um, um, become manifest in our world and in our life and to understand that just like clockwork, night will follow day, expansion will follow recession, um, one step will follow the other, no, a sunny day will follow a rainy day, good follows bad, bad follows good, but there are cycles in life, there's a cycle which is happening all the time and we just need to be patient to get from one cycle to another and as we said good people 
are found and not changed. And what we do speaks loudly. Um, and poor people spend their money and save what is left. But the successful, wealthy people, according to Jim Rowan, are people who invest their money and spend what is left over. The last point that Jim Rowan makes from this book, or in this book, is that time is both your friend and your enemy. So we all need to maximise and make the most of our time allotment, as I mentioned before, in order to, uh, to leverage that resource in our lives. And we need to weigh our actions. Jim is very big on weighing our actions and making sure that we're majoring on the majors and not minoring on the majors. And uh, he also says, this is a great point as well, that sooner or later you become the average of the half dozen people you hang out with. So his point and his call to action is to be very discerning with the circle of people that you have, discerning with who you hang out with, who you choose to hang out with, because it will have a major impact on the outcomes in your life. And that happiness, this is another good point as well from Jim, happiness is not about having more. You know, happiness is more about having less of everything, but more of the few things that are important. I guess one way of saying it is that happiness is all about having more of you know, good family and friends, but not thousands of family and friends, but few family and friends because if you try and have too many, if you try and become a people pleaser, then you're not going to be pleasing anybody, you know, is the lesson for all of us. And that in life, Jim reminds us that we need to act to make things happen. As we said, nobody is going to uh, knock on our door to offer us a promotion and knowledge needs to be fueled with emotion and action. It's no good just reading books and being an avid reader and a great learner and a great lesson, lesson uh, accumulator in life if you're not going to do anything about it. Jim says that knowledge needs to be fueled by emotion and action you've got to do something about it is the bottom line and that faith without action serves no useful purpose at all anyway thank you very much for joining me on this episode of jim's 5am club it's getting busy it's quite loud here where i am so i hope it's not causing too much havoc with the acoustics but I'll finish up here. I'm almost at my work site here at Barangaroo. But wishing everybody a happy Wednesday, a happy hump day. And um, I look forward to coming to you again from a different place with a different message of empowerment where we can live, learn and pass it on. And as I said, to highlight and showcase the beauty of this city of Sydney or wherever I am throughout the world and to overlay it with a message of empowerment from the many wonderful books that we get to uh, read thanks to the internet. Anyway, take care, bye for now and we'll chat again. Yasas.